I'm speaking with Sylvain, who just completed a project to produce print jobs from a mobile device to be able to drive a printer in the warehouse, leveraging the print node API third-party service. So we want to see how this all got wired up. So Sylvain is going to take us through a discussion. Thank you, Sylvain. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the application that you get on your uh, your phone. You open this up like this, so it looks like what it looks like. It's some debug information if you want to take a look at the things that are happening. May I ask, is this the extensible client framework, what we call ECF, drawing this mobile app? Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, okay. this script deployment is coming out of deployment of the ECF client app script. It's defined by a client app record, mobile app launcher. Here I have uh, the client scripts that drive the client side application, single page application. There's a server plugin. Mm -hmm. The server plugin uh, has a few things. We can go take a look at that in a bit. And there's some extra options that are defined here to give control to an administrator mm -hmm. to say what uh, CRE1 profile we want to use to generate the PDFs. Very good. Makes sense. And to define the default printer that's presented to the user in the app. Per perfect. Makes, makes sense. Thank you. <clears throat> Already when we did on page load, there was a, a call out to uh, plug in here mm -hmm. to load printers. So this immediately called out to the print node API, which is a third party service that the client has uh, set up their printers. If we take a look. Over here under devices, we see that they have these 14 printers. And already this got returned with uh, well, these 14 printers. So this is all the information that came out of that API. Got it. So things like uh, description and ID of the printer, which is important to create print jobs later on, things like that. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so where are we? We're in the update sales order portion, and we can search for a sales order, and we can click on a sales order. And then <clears throat> this here gives us the option of changing values for pallets and, and cartons as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an update and print button. Uh, if there's a change made, we'll actually save the change uh, while, uh, at the same time as we present uh, the, the dialogue here. So here we have a default number of copies based on the values on the sales order mm -hmm. and a default printer that's already are, are already selected based on that script parameter here. If we want to create, I think he likes it when I use this one to make a test and we can create one. This will actually create, this will actually print out something. So the, the labels that are printed by the CRE is, is here. Got it. And those are going to go on all carton boxes, correct? Yeah, the uh, the default number that pops up here of copies uh, mm -hmm. depends on the values of cartons and pallets and things. So if I Good. change one of these things, bring it up to five, hit update and print. Got it. The default number goes up. And in the background, if you look right now, it's still red, mm -hmm. the five that I changed. But once that save gets completed, it turns to black because it's actually saved. So the save went out, we saw over here, it took 13 seconds for the save. It's quite an intense sales order transaction submit, but uh, it's done. Um, we can hit print before the save's done. It'll just keep waiting until it's, it's finished. And when I hit print, first we get a call out to execute the CRE profile according to a record ID. So that was this line. The, this came back with a file ID of the PDF. So we can go look up that file. It's going to be the file that came out of the CRE profile. Great. And then we make a second call to the plugin to print the file with the number of copies, the file, the printer that was selected, and the source. So here I'm getting the source. So if we go over here, there should be, yeah, there's that 25 seconds ago, 27 seconds, it's already printed. It just went out. So this got created over here. <clears throat> there's an option in the print note API to actually send the raw data in PDF form. Got it or to send a URL or URI, so for it to uh, download it by itself. So the CRE execute function uh, doesn't create the file actually with is online option checked. I agree. So the plugin takes the file ID and the first thing it does is that it, it checks that box so that, so that the print node uh, third-party server can download the file without NetSuite access. And then I send, uh, well, I send the URL from the, from the plugin to, to print node yeah. and then it got printed. Did I understand you correctly? We're generating the file, which means great, it's in that sweet file cabinet. The default yeah. there is it's secured by the file cabinet. 
but you're actually getting the file ID and you're and you're passing the print node the actual URL, but the URL is secured, is it not? And let's take a look at the at the output. Uh, yeah, the URL is secure. I guess it's this one. Yep. Yeah, it's twelve twenty a.m. Uh, but uh, the plugin uh, checks that box here is online, available without login, so that this can be uh, accessed by the print node. Oh, I see. So in other words, as you do your call out work, you actually then also make available without login on? Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at that. So here's the, the plugin to the ECF app. Printers just is a link to the print library file printers function. Here's the print file. So the first thing that I do is I do I do load that file. I set is online is true and I save it. And that's what I send to the print library. Oh, it's pretty pretty clean. Can we see the library? Yeah, the print library is create print job. It's a file ID. It posts this uh, resource. It posts this up here. And uh, basically it posts to the print node URL and the authentication header, uh, authorization header. API key is held in the app setting. And we get to convert yep, it to base 64. And then the body is is all this. So we get the printer from the from the app and it's content type uh, PDF URI. And then we uh, pass in the URL. Nice. And the name and the source and the copies. And that's it. That's it. What we get back to the client side is the created job ID number. Got it. We get that back right away. We don't have to wait for it to actually be completed. So this is I the see. number that was created. Got it. That's it. Okay. This is very powerful. Thank you.